Welcome to Swim Life Pro's video tutorial on learning how to swim the complete elementary backstroke. For beginner swimmers who are concerned with not being ready to start the elementary backstroke, please check out our free video tutorial on the basics of buoyancy at www.swimlifepro.com. The elementary backstroke is not a competitive racing stroke. This stroke is used entirely for leisure swimming as well as for those who are looking to start swimming laps with a low energy, high efficiency stroke. In addition, the elementary backstroke is one of three swimming strokes where your face can be above water for the duration of the entire stroke. The elementary backstroke can be divided into four major parts. The head and body position, the kick, the pull, and the glide. These four parts encompass the entire stroke and must be performed in order to swim efficiently in the water. The first, most important idea we're going to be talking about for the elementary backstroke is your head position and why it directly affects how your body rests on top of the water. Having a proper head and body position determines the overall balance and efficiency of your stroke. Without the correct posture, you will not be able to swim the proper elementary backstroke. Think of your head as the steering wheel for your body in the water. Anything you do with your head directly affects your spine, which in turn directly affects what the rest of your body is capable of swimming correctly. While swimming the elementary backstroke, it is important to keep your chin raised slightly above your neutral head position with your eyes looking directly up above your head. Keeping your head position high while swimming the elementary backstroke will cause your lower back to flex, raising your hips higher towards the surface of the water. Your head should rest comfortably just at the surface of the water with your ears being submerged. For the entire elementary backstroke, your head should remain stationary despite a large amount of movement from the rest of your body. While swimming the elementary backstroke, the easiest and most common mistake among newer swimmers is to have an incorrect head position. Remember, what you do with your head directly affects what the rest of your body is capable of swimming correctly. While swimming the elementary backstroke, you'll be using a motion called the modified breaststroke kick. This is a symmetrical, full leg kick that is derived from your hips. For the modified breaststroke kick, there are two feet positions that are necessary for you to know. The flexed foot and the pointed foot. For the flexed foot, stand on any flat surface and try to raise your toes off the ground as high as you can. This will closely resemble the flexed foot while swimming the elementary backstroke. For the pointed foot, bring the top of your feet in line with your shins, pointing your toes away from your knees. This will create a flat surface from your knees to your toes. In addition, there are two separate phases for the modified breaststroke kick. The power phase, which creates the majority of the forward velocity of the kick, and the recovery phase which resets your legs in preparation for the next kick. Inside the power and recovery phases, the modified breaststroke kick can be broken down into three different parts. The down flex, out flex, and around point. Collectively, these three parts combine to make one fluid motion from beginning to end. The first two parts of the modified breaststroke kick, the down flex and out flex, combine to make the recovery phase. At the beginning of the recovery phase, your legs should be straightened together with your knees and feet relaxed. Start the down flex by bending your knees, lowering your feet towards the bottom of the pool while simultaneously widening your legs to where your knees are about shoulders width apart. It is important that your knees do not raise above the surface of the water. This will cause your hips to sink, creating an ineffective kick. At the end of the down flex, your feet should be flexed, resting directly below your knees. The second part of the recovery phase, the out flex, is the most important part of the modified breaststroke kick, determining how much power your legs will be able to kick with. During the out flex, keep your knees at shoulders width, only allowing your legs and feet to move outward. Start the out flex by rotating your feet outwards away from your body, maintaining flexed feet, while simultaneously driving your feet as far away from each other as comfortably possible. The further you bring your feet away from each other during the out flex, the more power you will be able to kick with for the power phase. Leading into the power phase, your feet should remain as flexed as possible. The power phase of the modified breaststroke kick, the around point, requires a strong and precise kick. Your feet for the around point follow a wide set sweeping motion back to the beginning of the recovery phase. Start the power phase by driving your feet forwards in a symmetrical sweeping motion, giving emphasis to the soles of your feet staying flat against the direction of your kick. As your flexed feet reach full outward extension, finish the around point by turning the soles of your feet in towards each other, bringing both feet in with power and symmetry to the glide position. For the entire around point, it is important to keep your knees no greater than shoulders width apart. The elementary backstroke has only one kick per stroke cycle. 
Adding any extra kicks to make yourself go faster will actually make you do the opposite, hindering the effectiveness of your stroke as a whole. The elementary backstroke's pull is a full-arm, symmetrical stroke that is derived from your shoulders and chest. Similar to the modified breaststroke kick, the pull can be divided into two different parts. The power phase, which creates the majority of the forward velocity of the pull, and the recovery phase, which resets your arms in preparation for the next stroke. The easiest way to think about what your hands do for the elementary backstroke is by saying the phrase up, out, together. The up and out combine to make the recovery phase, while the together is the power phase. The recovery phase of the elementary backstroke has one simple task, to be as efficient as possible, allowing the momentum of your kick and pull to be fully utilized. At the beginning of the pull, your arms should be straight and at your sides in a neutral resting position, palms facing down. Begin the up of the recovery phase by raising both hands towards your shoulders, keeping your hands close to the sides of your body. As a result, your arm should bend at your elbows, raising your elbows to be in line with your shoulders. The out of the recovery phase utilizes your forearm and hand to determine how much power you will have for the power phase. This demonstration will focus on how to create a more efficient stroke rather than having a stroke with more power. Begin the out by driving your hands away from your shoulders to straighten your arms. As your arms extend, rotate your palms to face towards your feet. If you would like to pull with more strength rather than efficiency, extend your hands further from your shoulders. This will give your hands a greater distance to travel for the power phase, allowing you to go further in the water with each pull. The third and final part of the elementary backstroke pull, the together, utilizes a large sweeping motion to create an effective and efficient power phase. Start the together by driving your hands in a symmetrical sweeping motion towards your legs, giving emphasis to the palms of your hands staying flat against the direction of your pull. As your hands reach your legs, relax both of your arms entirely, bringing your palms back to their resting position facing towards the bottom of the pool. At the beginning of the elementary backstroke, your body should be in its neutral resting position. This position is called the glide. It is important to remember that the elementary backstroke as a whole is the slowest overall stroke among all six official strokes. As a result, your kick and pull are performed infrequently, giving an emphasis to having the longest glide possible. The glide for the elementary backstroke is essential, as it allows the power from each kick and pull to move you through the water in the most efficient way possible. Unfortunately, the glide is easily skipped by beginner swimmers, as it feels unnecessary. It is important when first learning the elementary backstroke to overemphasize the glide in order to create good habits early on. The elementary backstroke kick and pull are performed simultaneously. In addition, your kick and pull visually look very similar for this stroke. An easy and effective approach to learning how to time your elementary backstroke properly is by following the same phrase, up, out, together, as used during your pull. The recovery and power phases for the kick and pull are done in unison. Timing both power phases together will create one large burst of speed for your stroke. As the power phase for your kick and pull ends, remain in the glide position for as long as your momentum carries you in the water. As your momentum in the water slows, start the stroke again. Remember, practice makes perfect. Gliding is the most efficient form of travel in the water, so long as you have momentum. Utilize as much of your glide as possible. Remember, the elementary backstroke is not a racing stroke. Always make sure to pace yourself slowly in the water. The elementary backstroke is swum entirely with your face out of the water. If you are concerned with your face being in the water, the backstroke and side stroke are two additional strokes where your face is out of the water for the duration of the entire stroke. Thank you for watching Swim Life Pro's video tutorial on learning how to swim the entire elementary backstroke. Please make sure to check out our other video tutorials in each of the six official strokes and treading water at www.swimlifepro.com.